Okay, we're here at the Josiah Benner Farm on the old Harrisburg Road. This was actually the farm. This is going to be part two of the Barlow Gordon incident. But this is actually the farm where General Barlow was treated, at first treated, um, after his wounding and his wife who crossed in the Confederate lines met. Now the farm is pretty much made up of the spring house, which is currently under restoration from the National Park Service, the actual home, and then there's a barn over here. Um, and this house was right in the middle of the action on the northern end of the battlefield on July 1st of 1863. It's a two-story brick house uh, that preceded the battle, and it is beautiful. It's, an ing it's, it's in fabulous shape, and now it's in park hands, so it's, it's going to be restored and taken care of. Of course, there's the Civil War plaque, um, which a lot of the homes in Gettysburg that, that were here during the battle get that distinction. Um, we're just going to walk around the house here and just take a, a look at it. If you look up above this window over here, there's actually a shell stuck up here in the window of this house. So. Um, most of the shells that you see like that weren't really shells that were fired or stuck in the building that way. They're usually something, usually when a shell would strike a building, like a brick building, it would, it would hit the building, do its damage, and fall down. It was after the battle that uh, mementos were made of them. A lot of them were just cemented into the wall as a permanent reminder of what happened. But it is very possible that a shell passed through the house and came out that end of the house onto the ground. So someone uh, decided to cement that shell up there as a memento of the battle. But again, this is the, the house and the farmstead where General Francis L. Barlow, immediately fo following his wounding just in that direction there, which is Barlow's Knoll, was, was brought just a short, short distance away and to this house, which was also a, a field hospital, and he was treated. His wife came here, she passed through Confederate lines, and, and, and took care of him here. And of course, he was moved from here to a, another home that we'll do in a later series, um, and he survived the battle. Um, this spring house, which I don't want to get too close to it, because it is being restored by the National Park Service, and I do want to respect their, uh, their restoration of this building. So I'm not going to get in too close or you know but this is a spring house that probably got used by both Union and Confederate soldiers I mean it was a way for them to shelter themselves from sharpshooters um, and may have even had a little bit of uh, rations in there that you know meats or something that could have been kept cold in the spring house so again this is the Josiah Benner farm on the old Harrisburg Pike leading into Gettysburg on the action of July 1st, 1863, the first day, and more specifically, the Barlow-Gordon incident here at Gettysburg. Okay, we're out here at Barlow's or Blotcher's Knoll, um, next to the Alms House Cemetery. And we're going to do a second video out here because I had a special request about some of the ground that was uh, fighting where Francis uh, Barlow uh, was severely wounded. Um, during the battle, there was an, an old almshouse for the poor, and it sat in that direction there just beyond those trees. I would imagine it's not too far where there's uh, green roofs in the background, you can see. And of course, they had a cemetery for the poor which is the old almshouse cemetery here. And then this piece of rise in the ground over here um, is what was Blotcher's Knoll, is now known as Barlow's Knoll. This is the ground that <clears throat> was fought on by 11, 11th Corps soldiers. Um, one of those was General Francis L. Barlow. And uh, there is some story, it's folklore, uh, it's, you know, it's one of those stories, may be true, may not be true. However, it is very intriguing, and with a battle as large as Gettysburg and as many books that have been written, uh, of many soldiers afterwards, after the war, that have told tales, it's not unfathomable 
that a story of such could have happened. Um, the story is more told by General Gordon, uh, Confederate General Gordon. And it goes like this. Uh, during the fighting here at Bolatres Bardnell's Knoll, um, General Francis Barlow was severely wounded. He was shot, the bullet ex uh, excited through his spine, paralyzing him. Um, General Gordon uh, came to him um, and gave him water to drink from his canteen in, in, a, in an act of uh, charity and love. And Barlow had made a request to him that he wanted his wife to know that he, she was in his thoughts in his last moments. Um, General Gordon stated that he did more than that. He knew that Mrs. Barlow, or found out that Mrs. Barlow was nearby and sent a messenger under a white flag of truce through the lines to notify Mrs. Barlow that her husband was severely wounded and did not expect to live. Um, Mrs. Barlow was also promised um, to get through the line safely to the Confederate side of the line and apparently that message did get through to her and she was notified and came under white flag of truce crossed into confederate lines and found her husband nearby in a home and we're going to go over that in part two of this video found him nearby in a home severely wounded and cared for him now of course as the armies moved gordon left the field um, and then, of course, after the Battle of Gettysburg, he stayed in command of troops. And it was after the war, at a dinner with his friend um, from New York, and, and a friend notified a man named Barlow um, that they were having a dinner and uh, a former Confederate general was going to be there. Uh, when they met, apparently... Gordon asked Barlow if he was related to a man, or a general rather, that was killed at Gettysburg. And that man replied, I am that general. And then he asked Gordon, uh, are you any relation to a man who killed me at Gettysburg? And he replied, I am that man. And apparently the two men became friends, and they had a very strong friendship after the war. Um, so this is the story of the Barlow-Gordon incident. Whether it be truth or folklore, it is very intriguing. And if, it, if, if true, it does show compassion um, between fighting men, uh, the right thing to do at the right moment. And, uh, and, and it is an amazing story, if true, that these men uh, met later in life and became friends, and even though on opposite sides of the Civil War, uh, there was an act of, of love and charity shown. And of course, as we all know today, um, the Civil War, in, in short detail, is basically a brother's war fought by the same country, uh, a divided nation, yet an, a, a united nation in some, in some sense of the word, who just believed in different things and therefore fought on different sides. But in the end, we are one great nation um, and that we should love one another and respect one another's beliefs even if we don't personally agree with them ourselves. So this is uh, Barlow's Knoll, then known as Blotcher's Knoll. I'm standing here in front of the 153rd Pennsylvania uh, Monument of the 11th Corps. And uh, this has been the incident of Barlow Gordon, and this is part one. Okay, Thank we're you. here uh, on Barlow's Knoll, uh, East Howard Avenue. We're looking at the old almshouse cemetery. <clears throat> now, the almshouse and the almshouse cemetery um, was here for the poor and indigent uh, of Gettysburg, uh, those who had no families, those who were mentally ill or very poor. Um, who had no one to claim their bodies when they died. Um, the cemetery itself was the scene of fighting on July 1st, 1863, as several Union artillery pieces uh, were
were here around the uh, borders of this very cemetery. Um, and soon thereafterward, uh, Confederates drove this Union artillery and infantry off this knoll uh, at the time of the battle called Blotcher's Knoll, today called Barlow's Knoll, um, back toward East Cemetery Hill on the 1st of July. Now, very often, just as then, the graves here today are not often visited because um, these people had no family. Um, and because they had no family uh, and no one to claim their bodies when they died, even years and years and years after their deaths, not many people uh, visit these graves. As you can see, uh, this is like the second or third car since I've been standing here, and here comes another one. And very often, uh, cars just go by here and go up the road to the monuments on Barlow's Knoll and then come back down. Uh, it's very uh, seldom you get to see someone here in the cemetery visiting these graves. And these were, were poor people, mentally ill people, uh, people that had no family. And, and they do deserve to be remembered just as anybody else on the planet. <laughs> Um, there are two Civil War veterans um, that are buried here. There's one here called Isadora Kiefer, uh, who died in 1873. Uh, and then we'll see if we can see the other one over here, <coughs> if the uh, stone is legible. Very often the stones are no longer legible or unknown. Um, this one doesn't look like it's legible at all, but there are two Civil War veterans, probably uh, local Gettysburg uh, residents who were too poor to either have a funeral buried in a cemetery uh, or had no family to claim their bodies. Again, this is the old almshouse cemetery. Um, just in the distance uh, over here, you'll see the Weiss supermarket um, and then there's a group of buildings over here and this is where the old almshouse complex sat. Um, it was a two-story brick building and it had, it had several uh, outbuildings and barns that once sat there um, and those were the residential homes for the, po for the poor people uh, or indigent residents of the town. Um, those buildings no longer exist. The only thing that still exists is the cemetery itself. So again, this is the old almshouse cemetery. It's got about 80 graves in it. Um, it's the scene of fighting on July 1st, 1863, here at Barlow's Knoll. Uh, it's an often uh, non-visited place, and it is a place that's, that should be visited because, uh, you know, um, you know, these people, and even today, burials are being done here today, and the people are very poor. As you can see here, there's some just simple markers, plastic markers, uh, from 2000 and 1999 that just go on the ground. And when someone couldn't afford uh, to be buried in a, in a regular cemetery, usually they were here. Here's a World War II veteran here that actually has a pretty decent marker. Again, this is the Old Almshouse Cemetery.